All right, hi everyone. This is um, my explanation for problem 2C slash 1A of round two, 728. So this is a first Div 1 problem. So if you're in Div 1, then congratulations. This will be slightly interesting to you, I guess. I don't know what I'm saying. But anyway, let's just get right into it. Haha. -ha. Um, what am I doing? Okay, so once again, I'm gonna assume that you've read the problem already. If you haven't, I'll put it in the description as always. So, um, basically what you're given is, you're given that obviously you have some directed graph, like some weighted directed graph of size n. And you're also given the shortest distances, um, which is from every node, from node one to all n other nodes. So, um, for example, I think the best way to visualize this is if we look at the input. So let's say if n was equal to three, and the input that we're given is zero, two, and three, then this means that if we were to have some graph, some directed graph, of course, that had three nodes, one, two, three, then we know that the shortest distance from one to one is zero. I mean, it's always zero because you're already at that node. Um, the problem statement does um, guarantee that the first number is always zero because otherwise it wouldn't really make sense. So that's already handled. We also know that the um, shortest distance from node one to node two is equal is a weight two. And then we also know that the shortest distance from node one to weight three is a weight three. So our goal is to add as many um, directed edges as possible such that the sum of all the weights is, is, is minimized. In the special condition is that you're allowed to have edges of negative weight. It's just that you cannot have um, a negative cycle because if you had a negative cycle, then like a problem wouldn't really make sense since all of these shortest distances, they could always be shorter. They could just converge to negative infinity. And that obviously just derails the entire problem. So how do we think about this problem? Well, because we want to add edges, we can, and the fact that we can add negative edge weights and to minimize our answer, it's logical to think that we want to have um, edges between all possible pairs. So what I mean by that is, keep in mind that there's a total of n times n minus one possible edges that we can add to um, a graph of size n because it's directed. So keep in mind this is a directed graph. Um, so logically thinking, we would we might want to be able to um, add all n times n minus one edges. But obviously we can't just add like a bunch of negative edges like carelessly because we still need to make sure we maintain the shortest distance um, condition. So how do we do that? Well, here's what we can do. We can visualize a graph as this. If we were to relabel um, all, of the, all of these nodes to a different node, then we can just, um, so for example, let me use a different, um, let me use a different sample where if we have node zero and the distance over here was like size was length three and distance over here was length one. <laughs> so from one to two to three. And then the shortest distance from one to two would be three, shortest distance from three, three from one to three would be one. Well, we can essentially relabel this node two as node three, and we can relabel this node three as node two. And what that's gonna do is, that's just gonna change this array to this. And this is essentially the exact same problem because we don't really care about what nodes are assigned as what, all we really care about are the distances, are the shortest distances between node one and all these nodes. So that's why we can think of a problem like this. First, we can sort this array um, by increasing values. And then we have something like this. So let's just say, for example, our array, I'll use a different example. I'll do use a different um, n because it's easier to visualize like this. And then let's just say, for example, our distances are zero to a to b to c. Just use like general variable names. And because we already sorted this array, we guarantee that this is true. Okay? So let's do this. 
let's arrange all of these end nodes as a line where this is node one this is like a second node where the distance from here to here is a and then this is three and four and so on so we can first assign edges like this from one to two we can add an edge of positive weight a and then from two to three we can add an edge of positive weight b minus a and then from three to four we can add an edge of positive weight um, c minus b and so this will satisfy all of the shortest distance criteria and the reason why is because there's only one possible path from one to any other node and as you can see from one to two it's length a from one to three it's b minus a plus a which is just equal to b and then from one to four it's c minus b plus b which is obviously just equal to c so this initial arrangement will satisfy the problem so now the question is how do we assign negative edges so that we minimize the possible so that we minimize the sum of all of the edge weights while keeping um, these shortest distances valid and the way we can do it is like this let's imagine we were to if we were like at some node that wasn't equal to one what if we wanted to like go back to an initial state that we were so for example if we were if we went from node one we're currently at node three the current distance that we traveled is equal to b what if we wanted to return back to node one then we can return back to node one um and we'll be at a distance of zero and so we can draw an edge from node three to node one as um negative b because we know the distance from one to three is equal to b so if we go from three to negative one with an edge weight of negative b then we essentially come back to node one with a total distance of zero and that's exactly how we started and so we can do like similar edge assignments like edge weight assignments like this so let's say we were currently at node two and the current distance that we traveled was equal to a because we started from one we are at two then we go from two to three and so our total distance traveled is b and then from three to four our total distance traveled is equal to c what if we wanted to backtrack to back to node two if we wanted to do that we essentially want to change our dis our total distance traveled from c to a and the way we can do that is we can just assign an edge weight of negative c or i guess a minus c to be specific because the total distance traveled over here is c c plus a minus c is just equal to a and we come back to node two with a total distance traveled of a so this will actually tell us how exactly we should assign these values so um basically what we can reduce this problem into is this <laughs> We have, we just draw these, all of these negative edges in this um, reverse direction. So like in this case, four to three, we know that we can have an edge weight of B minus C. And because B is less than C, this is negative. And because A minus C is negative, well, that's negative as well, right? So we like draw like all these edges like backwards. Like if it was over here from four to one, it would be negative C. And like three to one, it would be negative B. And then like from two to one, it would be negative A. From three to two, it would be um, A minus B. And then like so on, like, you know what I mean? I might be missing an edge here, but that doesn't really matter in this case. What matters is that now we, we realize that the um, sum of all these negative edge weights is essentially some multiple of these differences. So for example, negative A is obviously a difference of A and zero. A, in, a minus C is basically A minus B and um, B minus C, like combined together. And because this um, edge backwards cover, essentially covers over two of these positive edges, we want to cancel these two positive edges in this other direction. So if we visualize every edge that, goes, that has a negative weight and goes in the backwards direction, then the number of times each difference, um, like each difference of like, um, how do I say it? Like A minus B, because we care about zero minus A, A minus B and B minus C. Every edge can essentially be visualized as a range. And we want to figure out for each of these differences, how many ranges 
is it covered by? And so the way we can do that is for every, um, for every difference, we just count how many left point, how many left endpoints exist and how many right endpoints exist. So what I mean by that is this. For this first edge of zero minus a, also known as negative a, we know there's one choice of a node so that we can represent it as a left endpoint. And then there's three choices as a right endpoint. So we can either do two, three, or four. So we multiply this quantity by three because there's three edges that contain this difference. So now we move on to a minus b. We have two choices for the left endpoint. We can either use node one or node two, or we can use, or I mean, yeah, that's it for the left endpoint. And then for the right endpoint of this range, we can use three or four. So this is essentially multiplied by four because two times two is equal to four. And then for this um, difference over here, we have three choices for the left endpoint and one choice for the right endpoint. So obviously one times three is equal to three. So multiplying all of this together and then finding the sum of all this, this is equal to the sum of all the negative edges in our graph. And so if you take the sum of all the negative edges in the graph and then add on like the pos all these positive edge weights, then we have an answer. And this is the best possible answer because of the, because of the following logic. We know that we have to have some set of edges that sum up to C. Because if we don't, then it's impossible for our shortest path to exist from node 1 to node 4, because 4 has a shortest distance from 1 equal to C, or I guess 1 to 4 equal to C. So we know that there has to be some set of positive edges that sum up to at least C. And with this construction, we can use all the positive edges to contribute to the shortest path at C. And then for the remaining like unassigned edges, we can just make them negative edge weights that reset the progress that you've made as if you never went along this path in the first place. And that's why it's the most optimal answer. And you can't make this answer any lower because if you made even one of these reverse edges a smaller value, then you have a negative cycle because this is essentially you, you're going distance x, and if you went like back a distance um, x minus 1, then you've essentially traveled a distance of negative 1 in a cycle, and that's what's going to derail the entire problem. So yeah, that was a not-so-short explanation of problem C. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below, and yeah, I hope you found this helpful.